Welcome to the first video in a five-part section of the course devoted to the topic of IES 7, Statement of Cash Flows. In this introductory module, we will be analyzing the key terms and concepts contained in the standard, introducing the three types of business activities for which cash flows must be identified and presented, and inspecting the definition of cash and cash equivalents. In the second half of the module, we will also discuss the advantages and limitations of the statement of cash flows and introduce analytical techniques used in its interpretation. In the subsequent four videos of this section, we will be focusing on, in videos two and three, cash flows from operating activities as computed under the direct and indirect approaches, and in videos four and five, cash flows from investing and financing activities, respectively. The stated objective of IS7 is to provide users of financial statements with a basis to assess an entity's potential to generate cash as well as its cash needs. This is achieved by requiring preparers of financial statements to present historical changes in cash and cash equivalents in a statement which classifies cash flows during the period into those associated with operating, investing and financing activities. Such classification should allow readers of financial statements to properly assess the impact of the three types of activity on the overall liquidity of the entity. Specific cash flows should be allocated to one of the three categories in a manner which reflects the business of the reporting entity. For example, a bank would present the cash consequences of extending a loan under operating activities. On the other hand, the same transaction would probably be classified as an investing cash flow by a non-financial institution. It should also be stressed that a single transaction may comprise elements of cash flows which are classified differently. For example, a loan repayment which includes both a capital and an interest element. In such case, the capital repayment must be shown under cash flows from financing activities, whereas the interest portion may be reported as an operating or financing cash flow. As we have already pointed out, the objective of the statement of cash flows is to provide an analysis of changes in cash and cash equivalents. We know very well what cash is. It's cash on hand and demand deposits, which are typically kept at banks. So what are cash equivalents? IS7 defines these as short-term, highly liquid investments that are readily convertible to known amounts of cash and which are subject to an insignificant risk of changes in value. Because the standard treats such investments as equivalent to cash, the statement of cash flows excludes any movements between cash on hand or demand deposits and cash equivalents treating these as a component of the company's cash management activities rather than as part of its operating, investing or financing operations. It should also be stressed that although bank borrowings are generally considered to be financing activities, bank overdrafts are typically included as a negative component of cash and cash equivalents as well. Once again, this implies that overdraft borrowings and repayments would not explicitly be presented as cash inflows or outflows in the financing section of the statement of cash flows. Such an approach is mandated in those cases where the company's use of short-term overdrafts forms an integral part of its cash management practices. Let us now consider the advantages which the statement of cash flows presents, especially when compared to the income statement. As you very well know, the income statement is prepared under the accruals concept, which calls for the presentation of income and expenses in the periods to which they relate, 
as opposed to when the underlying cash flows occur. What is more, some items of income or expenses are not associated with a cash inflow or outflow at all. For many users of financial statements, however, a company's ability to generate earnings is less important than its potential to generate cash flows. This will in particular be true for providers of debt financing, whose primary concern is a borrower's ability to make timely repayments of interest and principal, which has little in common with income generation. What is more, the statement of cash flows may be used to assess the quality of profits generated to see what proportion of those profits actually turn into cash. And finally, the statement of cash flows is much less prone to manipulation or subjective judgment and is not easily affected by accounting policy choices made by the reporting entity. On the other hand, the drawback of the statement of cash flows is that as is the case with pretty much anything coming from the financial statements, the information which it contains is historic and its use for forecasting or projection purposes requires judgment and appropriate adjustments. Moreover, short-term cash generation in some periods may have to be sacrificed if the company is to grow, so a positive cash flow balance may not always be a sign of good management. To finish this module off, let's inspect some of the questions which ought to be asked when evaluating a company's statement of cash flows. Are there signs of overtrading? A worrying condition exemplified by a combination of high earnings but low cash flows from operating activities and significant increases in inventories, receivables and payables. Is cash from operating activities sufficient to sustain interest and dividend payments? Are investments in non-current assets sufficient to maintain operating capacity? This may be assessed by comparing purchases of non-current assets with the level of depreciation. If purchases are higher, then the company appears to be expanding. If the two are equal, the company seems to be investing in new assets at a pace equal to the wearing out of existing ones. If, however, purchases are lower than depreciation, the company's non-current asset base is diminishing, which is a potentially worrying sign. Is the company selling non-current assets to maintain liquidity? And finally, is the company issuing shares? taking on fresh loans or repaying them. If it is increasing or reducing the scale of its borrowing, this will have obvious consequences for cash flow generation and usage in future periods.